Here's a new installment on physics and today we're going to talk about work, energy and power and of course I'm going to show you some examples on how to work these three concepts. First of all we're going to show an example about work and the definition of work it's equal to force times distance. F stands for force, D for distance and of course that's only true if the force and the distance or displacement is in the same direction. If it's not, we need to write that the work done is equal to the force times the distance times the cosine of the angle between the two. In other words, if the force is pushing in one direction and the displacement or distance covered is in another direction, there's an angle between the two, then we have to also account for that. So looking at the problem, it says here that a box is pushed over a horizontal rough surface a distance of centimeters by a force of 120 newtons, how much work was done, and I guess the assumption here is that the force is pushing in the same direction as the displacement, so let's make a little drawing. So here's a rough surface, here's a box, we don't need to know what the coefficient of friction is, we don't need to know what the mass is, because it simply says that a force is used, um, the force being equal to 120 newtons, pushing let's say to the right, and the box moves the distance over the surface of 70 meters. So the displacement or distance is 70 meters. And if the angle of the force is the same direction as the displacement of the box, we simply have to write that the work is equal to the force times the distance, which is equal to 120 newtons times the distance of 70 meters. And that would be equal to, let's see, that would be 7,000 or 8,400 Newton times meters. Now we have a new unit for that. Newton times meters is the same as joules, so we can write that this is equal to 8,400 joules. You will also learn later that work can also be defined as the change in the energy. For example, if work is used to accelerate an object so that it gains more kinetic energy, or work is used to gain height, to, to give an object more height so that the object gains potential energy, the amount of work put in is equal to that change of the energy and we'll see some examples of that later. But here's an example like that. Now, what if we adapt it? What if we, instead of pushing with a force like this, we push with a force that is not horizontal? So let's say that we push with a force like this the force is still 120 newtons but now let's say that it makes an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal. So not all of the force is used to push the box along the displacement. Part of the force is used to push it upward and part of the force is to push it forward. And only the component of the force that pushes it forward is the one that will be doing the work. And so we can say that in this case the force in the x-direction is equal to the total force times the cosine of this angle, if this angle is theta, it will be adjacent to the angle, so times the cosine of the angle theta, and that's where you can see that now the force becomes force times the cosine of theta. And then working out the problem, we get work is equal to the force in the x-direction times the displacement in the x-direction, which is equal to F times the cosine of theta times the displacement, and so in this case that would be 120 newtons times the cosine of 30 degrees, times the displacement of 70 meters, and then the answer would of course be different. Now you may say, well wait a minute, how can a smaller force be pushing the box the same distance? And of course, if that was the case, maybe the friction was a little bit different or something so that it could actually be accomplished. So don't let that fool you, just remember that in every case, it's only the component of the force that pushes the box in the direction that it's moving that will you know, cause the work to be happening. Uh, let's see here, let's plug that in real quick. So it's 120 times the cosine of 30 uh, times 70 meters. And in this case, we would have a result of uh, 7,275 newton meters. And of course, a newton meter is the same as a joule, so that's 7,275 joules. So that's how you work a problem out like that. So here's some example of how to find the work done by a force causing an object to move. All right, let me uh, do a couple more examples like this. And this time we will work against the force of gravity and see if that changes anything. 